Welcome to Morbius, which starts off with Jared Latte, a kind, crippled doctor, catching a bunch of blood-sucking bats in Costa Rica, using his own blood to lure them in, which already has me questioning how the f*** he didn't die from this, or at least get seriously injured, like rabies. Isn't he afraid of rabies? And why he didn't have, like, a bleeding animal or a bag of blood, which he's in no shortage of, because he's a blood doctor, to use as bait instead of himself. What a great start to this movie. It's already absolutely retarded. Anyway, we cut back to 25 years earlier in Greece in a children's hospital where young Morbius is morbid out in a fucking bed, and either he's broke AF or an orphan, unsure, could be neither, could be both, who cares, because he welcomes a new rich boy which has his same uncurable illness that probably kills people a lot, really young and shit, because he doesn't even respect him enough to call him by his actual name and calls him Milo, because he'll probably die soon, so no use to remember his real name. And he explains to him how this fucked illness they have works. See, they have ruined DNA that makes them walk all fucked like, and need to change some blood three times a day. And immediately, Milo, aka Lucian, aka Young Doctor Who, has his controller die, he faints, because his bloody blood machine ain't working properly, so Morb dude fixes it with the spring of a pen and their doctor dude's like damn you smart i'm gonna send you to a fancy school in new york for fancy smart people he doesn't talk like that when we're talking like that so morb kid goes and leaves a letter for milo who gets beat up by asshole kids for it and i don't know if this is because i saw all the memes of how crap this movie is but this whole oh look at their friendship it's all oh, there's such close friends shit is rushed as fuck to me i'm not at all invested in their friendship or even care the least bit for either of them and again that rarely is the case so whatever back to present day with morbius rejecting a nobel prize for making life-saving artificial blood and his hot doctor friend telling him how stupid he is for doing that and how stupid he is for doing super sketchy experimentation with blood sucking bats trying to use movie science and take something from their dna and put it in humans dna because they can do something with blood that humans can't do with blood and it'll cure his disease basically this is a force fucked version of lizard person's origin story from the amazing spider-man anyway he did one successful test on a mouse so obviously he wants to keep going and develop this shit until he can test it on himself but it is highly illegal and very expensive so he goes to what we were supposed to gather from the very shitty introduction is his lifelong super rich friend Milo, like, sup homo? Oh, if it isn't my favorite terminally ill cripple. Okay, so listen, I might have a cure for this, but it's super expensive and very wrong. Say less, baby, you have me at very wrong. That doesn't make any sense at all, that's literally the last thing I said. Funding acquired. Skip to him and hot Dr. Martinez in a boat doing tests in the ocean, skipping directly to a successful attempt of a human bat DNA cocktail, and he like, good enough, and she injects him with this modified bat dinner serum, human serum, whatever you want to call it. He seizures it up a bit, as you do in these scenarios. A guard comes down to check on them, and him and Latina are being mean to each other. I get that he's a stupid gun for hire goon type dude, but he's hired to protect them. Why are they being such absolute <laughs> to each other? You're on the same fucking team, retards. Anyway, they then notice Morb dude missing and check on him, only to find a vampire dude that's super and releases vape clouds whenever he moves. He kills a dumb <laughs> Other guards come in and knock out Martina, so he kills everyone on the ship except for Martina, obviously, and drains their bodies of their sweet red vampire Gatorade, then turns back to a normal human, except he's buff now, and sees what he did on all the security cameras and can't remember any of it because it's like he passed out. Jit calls for help, SOS and the lifeguard boat stuff, takes the bat serum stuff and jumps ship. And once the big boat is found, Tyrese and Dorkman are the detectives on the case and exclaim how weird this is. Then we switch over to a time with Martina in the hospital and Jared fucking around, finding out he has to keep drinking blood or else he'll get weak again and or lose control and go on a sucking spree. It's unclear honestly, the movie makes a shitty job of explaining this. So he tops himself up with his fake manufactured blood, fucks around a bit more to discover his powers a bit more and he finds out that he's one with the bats, sort of, and he has echolocation that he tests out by bouncing a ball. the fuck did it bounce so much? Pretty sure there's a limit to how many times a ball will bounce no matter how hard you throw it. Or maybe not, I don't know, I'm not a scientist that tests this shit out. He also notes that fake blood only quenches his thirst for a bit and that short time keeps getting smaller and smaller so eventually he'll have to suck real blood and if he doesn't suck any blood at all, as I said, he will become weak and or like go on a sucking spree. So the genius doctor comes up with the brilliant idea to starve himself from blood in a glass box. How fucking wise of him. I mean, what exactly is he trying to achieve here? I know he wasn't trying to kill himself because if he was, then when Milo came over to check on him, he wouldn't have asked him to get him some blood. He had have just let himself die. Also, where the fuck did he get the blood to write this shit? Did he stab himself? Whatever, man. I die. I'm not even gonna fuck question this shit. So he drinks the fake blood that Doctor Who gave it to him, and Doctor Who thinks that he now found the cure for his illness, and he wants it, and he doesn't care that he turns into a vampire because he wants to live a long, happy, healthy, blood sucking life. But Morbius refuses to give it to him because he says it's a curse, not a blessing, or not a cure, and he forces him to leave. Then at night, a doctor has her blood sucked down to zero percent by a figure that the movie doesn't want to show clearly. So it's obviously not Morbius. You're not fooling anybody with a shit movie. So the cops were just questioning a conscious Martin 
Valentina in the hospital go to Morbius that is trying to escape with a bag full of blood after that news of that one bitch I got sucked came out. But then he meets Detective Fast and Furious and Detective Lame and Curious in the lobby who want to arrest him on basically no grounds but he goes a vape nage super bad and goes up to the roof using super jumps getting there in mere seconds and on the roof he for some fucking mad reason leaves the bag. I don't know why he does this but he leaves the bag and then some vape clouds push him or something. I don't know what these are. The movie never explained this shit by the way. And Tyrese shows up once again showcasing the raw capabilities of super fast 200 mile an hour movie elevators and arrests him and now in a detention complex which is just a fancy way to say jail they're charging him for the murder of that doctor in that hallway or nurse as it were she's a nurse i think he starts to get thirsty then milo visits him dropping off some real blood that the guards somehow do not see and he leaves without his cane limp fading away as he walks away which is stupid he took the bat serum and fucking became a vampire it doesn't take a genius to figure that out we're not deciphering the rosetta stone here it's not that big of a mystery no matter how hard the movie tries to make it feel like it is but that's not what's bothering me what's bothering me is that he only faked the limp and the illness for morbius this twat has no need to keep faking it as he's walking away and have it fade away. This was only done for movie suspense, which there is none of, but who cares, whatever. Mikey connects the oh-so-elusive dots, drinks the red Gatorade, and morbs out of his cell to find and confront Milo, who just killed a civilian. Then they argue, see, obviously Doctor Who killed this nurse, and he doesn't want to turn back to a normal guy, thinking this is great and not a curse, that they're not monsters, but Morb obviously thinks the opposite, and he wants to reverse the shit. Milo tries to leave, but Morb dude stops him, they end up fighting in the subway, with Milo killing a few cops, so Morb starts walking away from him, which is confusing as fuck, because he was just trying to, like, follow Milo a minute ago, now it's the reverse, Milo wants to get him. Then the Vape Nation shit starts happening again, and he escapes by flying in front of a train. Still have no idea what the fuck this is, and I don't know why Milo can't do this. What, he didn't unlock it on the fucking skill tree? Stupid shit movie. He might have gotten different powers, I don't know, but who cares. Morb dude beats up with Martinez, who just lost the cop sailing her, and asks her to get some shit from his lab, while he coincidentally overhears some thugs mention that they have a lab they use to make counterfeit money, and on the way to find this lab that he coincidentally found, he coincidentally finds some paramedics who coincidentally leave their bags fully exposed and open for him to take some of his coincidentally being there fake blood oh so many coincidences guys oh my god they're really pushing how many coincidences they can have in like 10 seconds right guys fuck i have no idea what's wrong with me okay um he finds the counterfeit money lab and scares the thugs away by breaking their fucking hand and saying shit like this who the hell are you man i am no, you're not. You're a vamp piece of shit. Next, we hop over to Milo, dancing and flexing, getting dressed between various inconsistent stages of getting dressed. Because look, buttoning shirt, tie on, blazer on, open, untucked shirt, still putting it on, except a tucked shirt, buttoned up, tie on. Now suddenly, he's tying the tie again with an untucked shirt. Yeah, he could be redoing everything because that's what you do when you get dressed. And this probably wasn't worth mentioning, but fuck you, it's, it's my channel and I do what I want. He then feasts on a few dudes and surprises Martina in Mike's old lab asking for his location. She successfully lies through her teeth, then goes to help Michael find a way reverse their vampiness then mouse sex it up on the roof of this building which is another stupid relationship nobody had a single nickel invested in but whatever milo is watching them because he clearly didn't believe and followed her and he does nothing and we cut to the cops immediately which is perplexing because we know that he knows morbius is working on a serum to reverse their vampireness and he wants to stop him but only later does he do anything about this why explain to me this is on cap no glizzy the dumbest fucking little wank shit i've ever seen in my entire life whatever cops though cops let's move on to the cops who we'll have cctv footage of milo fucking sucking off three dudes in a parking lot. The vampire type of sucking off, not the other one. Which fucking old doctor guy, you know the one, the one that was taking care of them when we were kids, saw on the news. So he went over to Milo who can't sleep and he figures out that he's a vampire and he wants him to stop this and be normal. Milo disapproves of his disapproval and injures him. Then that guy calls Michael for help who had just made a serum to fix his condition except it's more of a poison for vampires and will kill vampires rather than reverse their condition. So he goes over to his dying childhood doctor but he can't really do shit and in his dying breaths he tells him to stop Milo who is currently holding Martina hostage to lure him over. See? Told you he only does shit later. Also, wasn't he just there? What the? How did they not, like, cross path? What the fu- uh, Fuck this dumpster survival movie. Whatever. He uses super bad hearing to do that Assassin's Creed thing and locate them and flies over there using vape nace shit that is still very unclear to me. And he gets there only to find her at the brink of death. So she allows him or tells him or kind of forces him to drink her blood because real blood is better than artificial blood for vamps. It makes him stronger or whatever. And she wants him to go defeat Milo. So he gulps down a bit of her blood. She dies. Nobody fucking cares about about her. He starts fighting Milo who's just standing there chilling, quilling on a piece of scaffolding. They fight through that building, then Milo RKO's him through another building and then they end up in this, I'm lost on this honestly, I don't know what this place is. They end up in some fucking place, okay, with no people and a bunch of pipes and tubes and shit. Probably sewers. Don't know. Then Morbius somehow summons a shit ton of bats, stands up and proclaims that it is morbing time. Okay, maybe he doesn't do that. But he does sort of like command the bats to hold my Lucian down, which he for some reason is powerless against, although he too is a vampire, but whatever, I'm just gonna stick to my vampire vampire theory that they got different powers. But anyway, while he holds him down, he sticks him with this vampire poison and he's like, Michael, you can't kill me. <laughs> 
And he fucking does a Mickey Mouse voice, basically. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> like, watch. Like, can't kill me. So he dies, R.I.P. in Olive Garden's Unlimited Breadsticks. The cops arrive and watch as bats shoot out of the hole they like fucking entered through or broke through to get to the sewers area. And where the hell is the scar that Tyrese had throughout the whole movie? It's gone. Don't tell me it's hiding beneath the collar, that's bullshit. You know it isn't. Also, Hot Doctor wakes up as a vampire. Does that mean that the rest of the vamp victims also wake up as vampires or only her because he didn't suck her down to empty? Only like a little bit. But anyway, it doesn't matter. The vulture shows up and we get an after credit scene with him and Morbius. This movie gets a 9.3 out of 10. Amazing, lovely work. Chapeau, chapeau.